I know the, the word um, intuitive is a word that's used in your information a lot. Exactly what is an intuitive healer as opposed to another kind of healer? That's a really good question. You know, um, there's a lot of different words that we use um, to try to describe this level of connection that we make with someone. Uh, intuitive is in some ways maybe a more acceptable word. You know, when uh, back when I started doing this work, uh, we would often call ourselves psychics. And that's a pretty charged term that has a lot of different connotations. Yeah. Although, you know, the real meaning of the word psychic means like of the soul or soul essence. So that's like the root of that idea is someone that looks into or connects with that kind of energy side or soul essence of a person and interacts with it. And so I think as an intuitive healer, um, you know, we kind of use that to describe uh, this broader idea of maybe of energy worker, someone that connects with the person's energy and then follows maybe the intuitive guide uh, within themselves to do the energy and healing work, um, you know, doesn't necessarily follow uh, the analytical mind or the, uh, the thinking mind as much as the intuitive mind or that part of us that kind of uh, sees in that way. Um, and, and kind of gets in, it gives information in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's, that's interesting that you mentioned the word energy. Yeah. That seems to be a, a, a current mode of people thinking that we need to change energy or yes. generate energy for healing, et cetera. I think that's interesting. I know also that you started with being aware of and being intuitive when you were age 14. Yes, I did. Can can I pause this for a minute, Norm sure. and Julia? I am so sorry. I have I have one thing I have to take care of real quick. All right. Go okay. Ahead. Okay, I'm gonna stop the. Well, I think okay. I'll. It's okay. We can chat for a minute, Julia. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, You've heard from Randy yet, and you haven't heard from uh, Susan Bradford. Uh, I think both of them are still going to call you. Randy's father passed away, and he's having some issues at the moment. But I think he is definitely going to call you by the oh. Okay, he's back. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that, but as you know, it's cold here in Colorado. Yes. And I forgot to turn the heater down <laughs> so it wouldn't go off, um, yeah. which would cause a lot of background noise. So. I, I have to come back to my question about when you... <laughs> realize this uh, age 14 from a relative uh, frequently people who are gifted and i call it being gifted uh, are subjected to ridicule uh, sometimes harassed made fun of because you know things did you experience that kind of thing when you were a teenager um i didn't really because i didn't necessarily uh, kind of come out public with this okay. <laughs> knowledge um, right <laughs> off, right? Um, and it was not really something that was uh, developed at that time. It was something that I experienced. Mm -hmm. And then I had an interest in pursuing uh, from that point mm -hmm. forward. But it's, it's almost like it, I, I kind of grew up in a household where the idea of metaphysics and exploring uh, that kind of awareness was already accepted. So oh, I grew funny. up, yeah. you know, in the 70s, early 70s. <laughs> huh? And so I remember uh, before I really awakened to a sense of my own psychic or intuitive abilities, I remember my mom going off to astrology classes and starting to get into that. And we read... Uh, we had all the Ruth Montgomery books around the house. So if, I don't know if you remember her, but she was mm -hmm. big back way back when. And Seth, the Seth books and di different um, things like that were already in our uh, awareness and, and experience. Uh, and I think my first reading, actually, which I usually don't talk about this, was an astrology reading. So after my mom took her astrology class, the teacher... Um, gave, I think that, in fact, if I remember correctly, 
I was pretty young. I think the teacher gave away a reading and everybody could put names in a hat and she drew one and she happened to draw my name. So I got an astrology reading when I was like, I don't know, 10 or 11 or 12. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, what did I know? But I was exposed certainly to this world of a different way of looking at things. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, even way back then in terms of, uh, any kind of a, a church uh, experience. We went to Unity and explored that kind of a church experience. Mm -hmm. and, and so it always had that metaphysics mm -hmm. uh, kind of slant. And, mm -hmm. and then I had this experience of a, really awakening to my psychic abilities or intuitive abilities when I got my first reading. And, and it really kind of stirred some things in me, I think, to where I already had an interest, but then I really had this sense that it, this is something I could do or mm -hmm. something I, could, I should look into and pursue a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, I didn't really tell my friends that <laughs> I was exploring that so much. I, I had a diverse group of friends, but that that really wasn't a topic of um, conversation. conversation too much unless it was kind of the spooky side of things, which uh -huh. there are a few experiences like that that happened over the years as well. Uh, you know, it's always a little bit of of uh, both the fun, the excitement and the mystery and then the, the un unexplained and it, it can be a little bit scary at times too. So. One of the things that I find when people talk about different modalities of healing and so on, they have an interest in what you do. So when you meet a client, do you give them questions to answer first? Do you interview them? Or do you immediately do a reading on them for what they need to be done in terms of their healing? Yeah, so it depends on where the client comes from and, and what they're kind of looking for. So there's a couple of different things that I offer mm -hmm. um, in, in my practice. So the primary part of my practice actually is, is being a teacher mm -hmm. these days. So mm -hmm. the main thing that I, I focus on is teaching people how to connect with this part of themselves, how to connect with an awareness of energy and explore that. Mm -hmm. But when I do a, like an intuitive reading client or a healing client, um, very often those are two different things. So a person might come in for a reading and and that's more like a counseling it's like mm -hmm. taking a look at where i see their energy and giving them feedback uh, so you might say i read the aura i read mm -hmm. the different sure. energy layers of the aura uh, i might notice where energy stopped or blocked mm -hmm. um, they sometimes come in with a question and a theme and sometimes people just want to kind of get a level of feedback that a reading offers so they don't have a question. Um, and I don't really interview them. I don't do a questionnaire. I just take a moment to connect with them and have them say their name, which is kind of a way to tune into their energy and then just start to read uh, what comes of that and mm -hmm. what starts to, to come into the awareness from that. Uh, oh. So it may be different than a tarot reading. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, one of the things that uh, I'm a healer, uh, uh -huh. Shannon, and one of the things that I, I'm being annoyed about in today's world, but I guess annoyed is a good word, and I can say it all that I will. There's so many frauds coming around. Every corner they have a new kind of fever on the street. And it worries me that people are being duped. And right. But they could be really harmed psychologically and physically by a false fever. So do you, I do what I'm doing in your business to teach most of the time. Do you find this popping up all over where you are? Um, that's a good question. I don't really find it popping up where I am physically. Mm -hmm. Most of my business is on the phone, of course. And, and I do travel and teach on occasion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I understand the sentiment. I mean, it's... I, have, I started doing this work in probably 1984, mm -hmm. and I started teaching uh, basic meditation and beginning tools probably in about 1988. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so it's been a while. I've been, I've been doing this my whole life, both offering readings and energy mm -hmm. healings and then teaching uh, meditation is kind of the, the doorway into, uh, and it's a visualization style meditation, mm -hmm. but that's kind of the doorway into opening this part of oneself up. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of things about it in my take. One is that uh, there's a belief that I hold that everybody is psychic, that everybody has this within them. Now what that means in each person, how that manifests is different. That's the, the path of discovery. So some of us are healers, some of us are intuitive readers, mm -hmm. some of us are mediums, um, you know, some of us are teachers, actually, that we have a spiritual message to share. So, so everybody has that. So we kind of start with that as the premise. Mm -hmm. And then we, when I say we, I, I, there's other people that I teach with. And our, our philosophy would be that we kind of move someone into that path of discovery and the whole experience is meant to be for growth. So whether you're the reader or the readee, you're there seeking growth and it's not about telling someone what to do or a future. Mm -hmm. It's about helping each other discover our true nature, which mm -hmm. we believe is this energy self or the spirit or the soul of things. Um, so, so my take is that in, if you're kind of in that path, that it's not, there isn't fraud. There's self-deception sometimes. <laughs> sometimes we're, we, we're uh, you know, hitting a block and we're having to, to kind of just go through an illusion about ourselves or about something else. And so that's part of the growth. Mm -hmm. um, so, so our take in a reading isn't to tell someone like how to live their life or what to do oh, or what yeah. the future yeah. is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I'm telling someone that, you know, they're st stuck and they have all this karma and they have to come back forever and blah, 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 that, that could get on defraud, right? But, yes. but that's not our goal. Our goal is here's a path, here's an art to learn and something to develop in yourself. And if you want, if you're interested, uh, you know, we have classes to, to share that knowledge. And this is in um, classes in your psychic school? Right, so we have classes that um, start at the level of uh, learning the basic meditation tools, mm -hmm. learning how to work with chakra energy, mm -hmm. uh, into learning to develop your intuitive how to, how uh, awareness. You know? How does one pick a class with you in your psychic school? How um, yeah, and there's, there's two different places that one could explore that. The primary one for that first step is um, uh, I have a podcast called Energy Matters. Yes. And then we have a, a website called Energy Matters Academy. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the podcast, we, we interview lots of different people that are in the field of energy awareness, wellness, health, healing. Um, they aren't all psychics by any means. It's a, it's a range of people who are trying to, you know, help others mm -hmm. live a better life. Um, and then, then we offer, through the Energy Matters Academy, uh, a meditation course and, and uh, awakening to energy course, essentially, that uh, is, can be done by download. And then periodically we do it live over the, uh, just like this format, actually, live mm -hmm. over the internet. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're about to start an intuitive uh, training course. And that would be over the course of a year or so. Uh, you kind of do it in modules, uh, so you don't have to kind of bite off a whole year at once. Mm -hmm. But we do it in like three-month modules. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start that in March, uh, let's see, March 17th, I think. And how much do you charge for that? Um, that is uh, $1,250, something like that, mm -hmm. for that course. Okay. Yeah. And now, uh, another question, because people will find this interesting. They would want to yeah. know information about this. I think this is wonderful. Uh, do you give a, a certification? If these people have completed the course, and well, like some places do. And, we do. We, we, you know, by at the end of the course, because part of the course, um, it's not just a theory course, you know, the, yeah. none of this stuff works in that mm -hmm. way, right? As you know, it's all experiential. So mm -hmm. we, we teach 
uh, the information on how to first find one's own energy connection and mm -hmm. connection with higher source. And then we teach how to start to interact with someone else's energy and uh, both intuitively look at and read their energy and, and also help to heal and change energy. Um, and so along the way, they're actually doing uh, student readings uh, as part of the, the course, much like if you were learning massage, you would do student massages. Mm -hmm. And so over the course of that year, you, you will do many, many readings where you're uh, being mentored with a more experienced reader kind of taking the lead and you get to uh, kind of hang out uh, alongside of them and, and learn. Um, so then by the end, we, we, we stand by the fact that you know how to read an aura, you know how mm -hmm. to see energy, you know how to uh, mm -hmm. recognize a block in energy uh, and, ch and help someone move through it. Uh, of course, you know, you can't make someone move through anything. No. You can just bring it to light and, and be neutral and, and uh, compassionate in, in pointing that out to someone and create space for them to release it and move through it. And, and that's always the goal. And have some guidance along the way. Yes. I understand that you have a, a, a number of people who teaches with you at the uh, Associated Cornell University. Yes. So David Gandelman uh, and I started uh, the Energy Matters podcast. That's it. <laughs> Yes, and he he um, he's an intuitive as well, but he also came at it more from the pure meditation side originally. He, he uh, explored meditation and, and traveled through India and did all kinds of meditation type things. So he um, offers meditation and teaches meditation mm -hmm. uh, at a number of meditation centers in Los Angeles and through Cornell, their wellness center. They offer meditation. Uh, he has some courses there that he offers. Uh, can you um, uh, identify what kind of meditation? I know there's mindfulness and so on. Different kinds of meditation. There is. Um, <laughs> there's lots of different kinds of meditation, isn't there? Um, and you know, and in many ways, if we have that intent that we're trying to uh, shift our focus into energy and spirit and self-reflection, we can call it meditation. Mm -hmm. uh, we do teach some specific, what we might uh, call energy tools mm -hmm. or psychic tools uh, to help someone get into the place that would open up the uh, mind's eye. And, and so it's a lot of visual mm -hmm. uh, type of a meditation, a visualization, and it's also really connected with the body. So it's not something where you're kind of journeying away, but kind of inward into mm -hmm. a, a sense of groundedness oh, okay. and connection with the body and flow of energy in the body, uh, awareness of one's own energy space. So it has all these uh, kind of components that uh, bring a person into opening that third eye and safely. Uh, you know, one of the, tricky things with some of these psychic experiences is it's not always that difficult to open it up. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes a little interesting on how to handle what you open up to and how to process it. If you don't have some tools or mm -hmm. other people to communicate with yep. or some kind of feedback, right? So uh, it's not all just about learning stuff. It's about learning how to process in a certain way about learning how to stay centered and grounded when you open up to, to someone else's energy or to, you know, um, if you open up to spirits or whatever, there's, there's a lot out there. There's a lot more out there than people know. And it's a lot more real than people think. understand and what they're calling radical undoing. Mm. Have you heard of that one? No. What is that? No, I don't know either, and I thought maybe you. I'm sorry, Tony, but I didn't. I didn't be put on the spot. What are you on? Radical undoing. Radical undoing. I like that. <laughs> well, anyway, five five out. I'll let you know. <laughs> well, I think this is this is a wonderful approach. I I like this the whole concept very much. Uh, I also think that all too often we shut down these talents, if you want to call them, these skills that we have 
instinctively. Mm -hmm. Don't let them develop, and that's a shame. Uh, I'm a retired college professor, and uh, among other things, <laughs> ah. <laughs> they bury creativity and original thought. Mm. At a very early age in children, uh, we make fun of them, wake up, don't nap, where you're staring at them while you're daydreaming. And I found that when you're doing a daily listening and absorbing so much more, you need to get over that so that they can experience these things and it's okay. Yes. Did you ever have a childhood friend that was invisible? That was what? Invisible. Oh, and yes. That, yes. <laughs> did you? Everyone but you. <laughs> yes, I did. Okay. Yes. Did you? Julia? Yes. Did you have a color friend like that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think then, everybody thought I talked to myself, but I wasn't really. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Sat down when, when actually we we're making a bad mistake. Yeah, I think if I think way back to my early training, I think one of the, the first things in a healing class that in the way we teach uh, working with healing energies, we work with a guide. Mm -hmm. And uh, the minute I kind of got my first guide and, and had that experience, you know, all of a sudden this kind of memory comes back of talking to this other person, right? As when I was a child, um, having this, other person around and uh, realizing that perhaps that imaginary friend was not so imaginary. <laughs> it was really perhaps. And was there all along. Guy. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I find that we've lost a lot along the way and we have to relearn really that. Yes. And I'm not blaming technology. We're using technology to communicate right now. And it's a wonderful way that we can do this. I'm talking about the preoccupation with other things, other yes. things which are natural uh, to the human being and to the world. Yes, it's it's an amazing time right now. The the yes the changes that are happening. Oh, I well, I don't are. think we know exactly how to handle them, and especially relative to the impact it has on our energy, yes. and our awareness, and our attention, and and as good as the technology is for sharing ideas, there are aspects of it that, uh, you know, kind of seek to control us or mm -hmm. are kind of like this, a little bit of an assault on our uh, awareness and consciousness because it just comes in so quickly. And so it just, like, we don't have the, maybe we haven't developed the filters we need uh, to handle the technology, like we've developed, we learn and develop our filters out in the world, you know, as we grow and go to school, we learn how to kind of hold our space and, and filter out mm -hmm. things that we don't want from other people. And uh, I don't know that we know how to do that yet with the technology. Uh, um, we don't. Yeah, I think our, my best advice for that could be that we need to uh, really foster a meditation practice where we set down the technology with intent yes. and meditate and then and then use the technology where right now it feels like the technology is using a lot of us and right. and that's not the way it's supposed <laughs> to be <laughs> that's one reason i started the camp i mean it's mm -hmm. only one weekend a long weekend per summer but we get together in real life yes because some things are transmitted non-verbally. Right, absolutely. Uh, Many you know, things. Like, uh, I have a, I have to reach out and hug you. <laughs> I like what you're doing, but that's not possible. Right. But in direct communication, individually, that would be possible. Yeah, I think that uh, we have a, a way to go yet in order to bring back this control of ourselves, I guess. If you want to use the word control, I don't really like that word. Let's say being ourselves as we are supposed to be natural. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. You, you know, it's interesting because, the, of course, the, the school I came up through and, and the amount of time I, how I mm -hmm. learned all of this, 
uh, was all in person. There was no yeah. phone yeah. classes. Uh, there were no tapes. I mean, you went to class and you learned and, and it was all passed on kind of as a, from one person to, to the other through their experience. They would tell stories about their experiences and share the concepts, you know, wrapped in story. And, and it was all in personal interaction. And it's only, for me, it's only been, um, gosh, what is 2020 now? So maybe I started really teaching over the phone 15 years, maybe 12 mm -hmm. to 15 years ago. But prior to that, it was always in person. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know that it's wonderful that we have such reach, but it, it's the learning time of learning of how to use this technology um, and interact with it in a way that, you know, still, like you say, it, it's not so much control, but that we maintain our internal integrity and we don't lose ourselves to it. Uh, and I, I think we're, we're all struggling to, to learn that and to kind of yeah, figure we that are. out. We're kind of running out of time here, guys. And okay. I want okay. Cody to give us, let people know how they can get a hold of you, Cody. Yes, um, we need a website and uh, a URL, uh, Cody. Maybe you could put it in the chat. Mm -hmm. Put it in the chat room or someplace. Oh, yeah, yeah. Perpetuate just a little bit for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so there's really two websites that are the best places to get to me. Um, I don't know if I can type and talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep Norm busy while you type. <laughs> I might I might have mistyped it, but uh, one is Intuitive Vision dot uh, net, and that's my website where if you want to. Um, right learn, you know, have a one-on-one -on -one with me, that, that's where you can explore that. Most of what I teach um, on my own are kind of advanced courses. So they are courses for someone that's already done the intuitive training and they've been reading. So I teach uh, mediumship and kind of advanced work with guides and that kind of, a, that kind of work. So, so the Energy Matters Academy site is where you'd get the basic uh, prerequisite to, to some of the more advanced stuff that I teach. Um, when are you coming out with a book? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that has been uh, brought up numerous times, and uh, I am working on that. Um, I know you have to be. <laughs> it is. I am not a, I'm a talker, but I'm not a writer in some ways. And that's really, that's my next thing. You know, I've kind of gotten, look forward to it. yeah, I've gotten to an age where it's like, yeah, it's time to, to maybe switch gears a little bit and, uh, share that experience. yeah, share the experience a little bit. Yeah. Well, we thank you so much, uh, Cody, for being our guest. It's, it's been just delightful. I've enjoyed it so much and we hope to see you again soon. Yeah, yeah, well, thank you. Camp, huh? Oh, okay. yes, I'll look into it. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. And I wonderful. certainly enjoyed spending the time with you and, and wonderful questions. And uh, definitely hope to see you all again. Yes, and I want to I invite anyone who's watching this later um, to request an interview yourself at talkstory.media. Very nice. Okay. So I'm going to turn off the recorder now. If I can figure this out, what is my problem? And I've got the controls. <laughs>